Hi boys and girls, today <clears throat> I'm going to show you how to make Anansi the spider uh, in his web. Hopefully you had time to watch the video, um, read aloud of Anansi the spider, and also the video on the Ashanti Adinkra stamps and Adinkra cloth. So we are going to use both of those as inspiration from this for this artwork, and I'm going to start by creating a colored piece of paper. And I could use construction paper, but a lot of people don't have that at home. So I want to make a cool colored background. So I'm going to use cool colors only. That would include any type of blue, green, or purple. And I'm going to use markers, then water and a paintbrush to color my paper. So with my cool colors, I'm going to kind of scribble color all over my paper. And because I'm using several different cool colors, I'm gonna add each color in several different places on my paper. And I can make some of them overlap, but I wanna try to fill most of the paper. I wanna try not to leave any really large white areas. If you have watercolor paints at home, you could use watercolors as well. And if you wanted to, if you have construction paper, you could skip this all together by just using a piece of colored paper. So once I've kind of scribble colored all over my paper, most of it is, is filled in, I'm going to take a wet paintbrush and I'm just going to blend those colors to fill in the white spots. So I'm going to paint all over and try to kind of blend my markers together. Now I want to get rid of most of my lines if I can and try to make this as even as possible. If I get too much water on here, it's going to make a lot of puddles. So I want to be careful to spread my water around. Also, if I keep adding water and painting in the same spot too long, my paper will start to get really weak and rip. So I don't want to do that either. Now, you'll want to wait for this to dry completely before you do the next uh, step. So if you have a hair dryer, um, ask the adults you live with if you can use it to fast dry your paper. I actually made one earlier that I've already let dry so I can show you the next step. So I'm gonna wipe up my space here, put my completely dry, this is all dry, no dampness or anything, piece of paper down. Now the spider web is what I'm gonna draw first and I use this page in the book as my inspiration. So if you remember learning earlier in the year about different kinds of lines, that will help us draw the spider man, the spider web, <laughs> not spider man. And the only tool I need for this is a white crayon. Um, you could also use a white pencil or a white oil pastel. White crayon is probably gonna be the easiest. So I'm gonna start by drawing lines from the center of my paper out. So if I start in the center of paper and go straight up, then from there I'll keep starting in the center but ending my lines in different spots. So I'm gonna go diagonal with my lines and then horizontal, diagonal again, then vertical, diagonal, just like a clock. I'm gonna go all the way around with my lines. Next, I'm gonna draw the top and the bottom of the spider web. So near the center, I'm gonna draw some straight lines to kind of make the center of the web, just connecting with straight lines from one of my diagonal lines to the other. And then I'm gonna repeat that step closer to the outside. And these lines are going to be some diagonal, some vertical, but I wanna keep them near the edge of the page. Kind of like connect the dots, but we don't have any dots. Next, I'm going to fill between the spaces that I just made. So these two lines, these two lines, and this empty space here, I'm going to draw all different kinds of lines. And it might help to draw a couple of horizontal lines first, or some vertical lines first. And then once you've divided it up, you can go in with diagonal lines, maybe going two different directions, zigzag lines. I'm gonna draw a line here and make bumpy lines. 
You could even do uh, curved lines, make half circles, or I can do two sets of zigzag lines here, so I have a little extra space. And I'm just gonna continue that until I've kind of filled up my spider web with lots of different kinds of lines. And this is a great way to practice all the lines we've learned in art. And if there's one that's really, really hard for you, you can practice that one a little bit extra. I can crisscross some of my lines, especially diagonal lines. I can combine and do horizontal line and diagonal lines in the same spot. I could draw a line and do curved lines on both sides, which would make a circle. I'm going to divide this space up and draw more curved lines, diagonal lines. Some I can just do more horizontal lines or vertical lines. Keep those simple. And in some spots, I can get really fancy. I'm going to do really tall zigzag lines here. Remember, you don't want to start this until your paper is totally dry. If your paper is even a little bit wet, this could even rip it. And we don't want that. I'm just going to continue. And it can repeat lines, too. I don't have to keep drawing new lines. I can just repeat some of the lines I already drew. I'm almost to the end here. Now my spider web is complete and I'm ready to make my spider. Now we learned in the video that in the Ashanti culture, they make something called a dinkra cloth using stamps. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make your own stamp and you can create the bodies of your spiders using symbols from the adinkra. And a document with the adinkra symbols is attached you can use those or you can make up your own. All you need for this is some scraps of styrofoam. You can use um, an egg carton or a meat tray or any type of styrofoam you have in your recycling bin. And I cut up a few small pieces here to use. Um, you can choose the, the body shape of your spider. You can cut an oval, a circle, a square, and any, any shape you use would would work. If you want to make more than one spider, you can cut several different shapes. So I'm going to make a few shapes, circle, a square, a triangle, and a rectangle. And, and I'm going to use a ballpoint pen. I need something that's kind of pointy to make my patterns on here. And I'm going to use some of the Adinkra cloth patterns. So with my styrofoam piece, I'm going to carve in one of the Adinkra symbols. And on this one, I'm going to draw the symbol for justice, which looks like two overlapping diamonds. And you can choose whichever symbols you'd like to use for your spider's bodies. Now I want to make sure that this shows up. So after I, I draw the lines, I'm going to fill in and make the lines a little thicker. The deeper and thicker you make these carved lines, the better your stamp will show up. All right, now I'm gonna choose what color I want my spider's body to be. And I'm gonna color this piece of styrofoam with a marker. I'll do this first one with black. And when I color the styrofoam, I need to color just the white parts. And I actually want to make sure that this marker stays wet when I stamp it. And so I'm going to color as quickly as I can, make sure that marker is kind of fresh. And then I'm going to lay it on a separate piece of paper and press down all around it. Make sure that it doesn't move. And then when I peel it off, I've got my stamp. 
And of course you can do this with other colors. You can even make two or three different colors on the same piece of styrofoam. Just remember, you wanna work kind of fast. I'm gonna blend some purple and some teal here. I don't want it to dry. Now, um, one technique you could use if you're kind of slow at coloring is you could spritz it with a water bottle before you stamp it to make sure that marker is still wet. I'm gonna press that down. Ooh, don't wanna let it move and then peel it off. So I can make several different spiders, several different bodies and different shapes, different colors. Um, if you're gonna put a really different color on there and you don't want the colors to blend, you can use a little water to wipe off your styrofoam, kind of clean it. I'm gonna make a red spider here. And I'm gonna press down all over. Don't let it move and peel off. So once I've made all my spiders, I'm gonna cut these shapes out. And I'm gonna glue them to my web. Now the only glue I need for this is a tiny dot. You could also use a glue stick if you don't have a glue bottle. So I'm gonna find a good spot for my spider here and I'm gonna hold it down for about 10 seconds to make sure it sticks. I can glue all of my spiders on here at this point. And then I'm gonna draw the rest of my spider using my black marker. You could use a regular marker or a Sharpie marker, although the Sharpie is gonna color the color cover up my, my white crayon better. So I'm gonna draw in the head and I'm gonna draw in eight legs and I'm just gonna make really simple legs with diagonal lines. I'm gonna make it bend in the center. I'm gonna put four on the other side. And there's my spider. Now you could add lots of spiders to your web so it looks more like this picture and you could even make an extra big stamp for Anansi the spider to go in the center.